Hello everyone. I'll be around in just a moment. I hope you can see me. I have the little dot back there. I hope that works. Um, because, welcome, hello, I'm Kim Creighton. This is my first time doing a Twitter chat and I'm glad I tested it because I was on my wrong account. I was in the Junior Dev Mentoring account, which is not the account that um, it's supposed to be for this Twitter chat. So, um, yeah. So I'm happy to be in the right place. Um, if you have any questions, oh, let me move over. So oh, seems like I am in the wrong space. You're not. Let me. It's working. Okay. I'll stay here a little longer today, just because um, <laughs> this is new to me. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so um, I call this Taming the Wild West. So if that you have any questions, please use the hashtag Taming the Wild West because, as you can see. Doing things like this is like the Wild West. Um, there are no rules. Um, I decided um, yesterday about five that I was going to do a try this Twitter chat thing because so many people have been asking me about, um, oh, <laughs> about, um, let me move the camera a little bit. Okay, so what I was saying is I don't have, okay, the whole Wild West thing comes from all of this is new. There are no rules to this tech thing. Um, and then I moved the camera out of the way. See? See? That's what happened. There are no rules to this tech thing. It is, um, you got to figure it out. And that's what I'm trying to do. See? And now I can see that I'm in my screen. So, <laughs> um, so I have an upcoming workshop called Taming the Wild West Strategies for um, Successfully Transitioning to Tech Careers. And it's, I've been getting a lot of DMs and questions from people asking me, um, how do I do this? And so I decided I would just take a 30 minutes. It might be more today just because, again, I don't know what I'm doing. I take that back. I do know what I'm doing. I know what I'm saying. It's the technology thing that I'm trying to figure out because, um, as I was saying, when I was on the wrong um, Twitter handle, um, I decided to do this yesterday about 5 o'clock. So it hasn't even been 24 hours since I made this decision. Hey, why not answer? Because people were asking me questions. Why not ask, try to answer some of these online? And then um, it wasn't until this morning that I realized, oh, crap, um, I need to really get plan this. And so what I have is an iPad, but it's a, a, a Generation 2, so it doesn't have a front-facing camera. So I had to set that up. So that's why I'm kind of playing with it because I can't really see, I cannot not really see. I can't see at all where I am. Um, because it only has a rear facing camera and then I have my laptop here and my phone here just in case. Um, so if you have any questions, please tweet them. Um, use the hashtag Taming the Wild West. Um, that's the hashtag we'll be using. But I have thankfully a few questions on deck that I wanted to go and address. So um, my question, one of the questions was, and I'm just going to read it and then I'm going to read your response. Um, to a few of them that I already did and then I have a question that came in yesterday that I did not answer yet and I did not actually really look at it because I wanted to be kind of fresh. So the first one is, hi, um, may I ask you some, um, ask someone guidance in changing careers in IT? It's actually not for me but for my husband. He is a journalist and now wants to become a programmer. At first he was learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript just because it was the first thing he met and thought it would be low entry level. That's funny, um, and that's the that's the problem. A lot of people think HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are low entry level. They're not. Um, you're learning, trying to learn three languages, which is very complicated. And so, um, uh, where was I? Um, but after reviewing some current, uh, some current, we some current we technologies, um, I was second guessing and thought it was too much. Um, of a zoo to learn exactly. Um, we were programming, and excuse the the grammar in these, some of these uh, people who are reaching out to me are not, English is not their first language, so I'm reading as it is. Um, so, and that's another thing about be, be having an inclusive and a uh, diverse community is welcoming people from all cultures, uh, particularly understanding people who have challenges with English as a second language, a third or fourth. We are programmer. We were programming some simple JavaScript together, and I thought he 
doesn't have enough basic of a program by itself exactly and that's the issue with that um, people not understanding what variables are or what functions are or what objects are all those things before they jump into these um, these languages um, <clears throat> So after a brief discussion, I brought him to Python, a Py Python book. I love Python. Um, mostly because it had really good descriptions for newbies. Sorry for the long message. So may I ask your advice in this book's practice university? Um, how should the way of a, the new program look like? And my response is, you're absolutely correct. I don't personally encourage people to start with front-end development, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, because there's way too much to learn just to get things moving in the right direction. Um, my go-to is fundamental is a fundamental language um, such as Python, and learn Python the hard way is an expensive way to do it, inexpensive way to do it. Working through the book will allow him to build a fundamental understanding of computational thinking while he'll need, uh, which he'll need to, um, in becoming a successful programmer. Uh, she says, thank you so much. I was worrying. I was misleading him. I just checked out, um, just checked out. We bought the book by Michael Dawson. It had pretty good reviews. Um, I hoped it would go too. Um, we're planning to look for a free internship program um, after he decides he's ready. And I said, nope, there are too many messages saying how easy this shit is, and it's not. Once he can build a foundation, he'll be better prepared. I've also had people go through course courses 2 through 4, the code.org, with, uh, with amazing results. Now I'm going to speak to code.org because code.org is um, has been a really good foundational piece for um, a number of my students um, because it doesn't even cover language. You're really talking about computational thinking. You're really getting the learner to think about thinking programmatically, um, thinking about algorithms. Um, when you start people off with CSS, HTML, CSS, um, JavaScript, and they've never even looked at coding, they think algorithms are something very complex, and they can be very complex, but basically an algorithm, or algorithm is a set of instructions. And they get that basic understanding with code.org. So I always recommend, unless for people who have absolutely no background, I always recommend that they go to the code.org course and start with course two and go, and they added another one, so go through course two through four. Uh, course one, I think, is for people who are learning to read. Uh, so if reading is your second language or third, that might be a good course for you. So that's a really good course and it's free. Okay, so my second one is, hi, I'm in interested in transitioning into tech. Specifically, I'm a blockchain obsessed, but intimidated by all the CS degreed powerhouses in the field. I'm a mid-career, a mid-career in questioning if it's worth pursuing new hard skills uh, when I'm a poster child for soft skills and emotional, and emotional intelligence. Um, and no matter the response, thank you for posting your openness to help and be a mentor. Um, thank you for that. My response to her was, this industry definitely needs more people with strong soft skills and who have the ability to leverage them in ways that moves us forward. Adding some basic hard skills, if you mean coding experience, would be helpful in being um, the tipping point on how much influence you'll have. There is no need to make things complicated. I recommend taking, uh, again, me, uh, learn Python the hard way. Um, although it's no longer free, it's, m it's more than worth the $30 investment for developing your fundamental knowledge and then fill in the holes from there. And she wrote, thanks for the encouragement. So let me stop right there because I want to explain why I love Python and py learn Python the hard way. So um, my mentor, um, his name was Toby Holt um, at the time. He is one of the organizers of the Atlanta JavaScript, me JavaScript meetup here. And I just kept coming back. That's what he said he mentored me. I just kept coming back. I just was trying to figure this thing out. And he finally said, okay, put JavaScript aside. It's just too much going on. Um, and, and up to that point, I didn't think I, I just thought like most people, development is for me. I'm just stupid. I can't figure this out because everybody's talking about how easy this is. And so I was just like, why can't I figure this out? This makes no sense to me. I don't understand why I can't figure this out. 
And so um, he said, nope, let's do Python. And so he said, we'll do Python, uh, learn Python the hard way with also the Python Tutor, um, which is a debugger. So it's at pythontutor.com. And I like this debugger because it has a great UI UX. So UI is user experience um, and UX is user, um, UI is user interface and interaction interface. One of the two, I'm sorry. And then um, um, UX is user experience. And what it does is a very good visual. So when you're building stuff, it, it actually, you can see the how how a function works because it like shows you it's not just looping through when people do breakpoints and other debuggers and stuff you really can't see it this draws a visual picture of something being built and it really helped me but python was a language that really let me know wow i can learn the code oh it's not it's not that I, i'm defective the other things were just too complicated for me and it was only at that point when i decided oh now that I know I can code, I really don't want to code. What I want to do is do what I'm doing right now. is helping people transition into code, making um, this community better for people who are, you know, for diverse, um, different people from back, different backgrounds and, and perspectives. So soft skills are much needed. We need people who have managerial background. We need people who have pro, uh, project management skills. We need, we need people who understand HR, but understand it from a technology perspective. Uh, and understand about Agile and all those kind of things. Those are the things we need. So um, everybody, I believe everybody should have a basic computational background, which is understanding what an algorithm is, what's a program, what's a function, and why does it, why do, do you care? Just so you can have some basic understanding and have a basic conversation with some very technical people, it makes your life much better. But everybody doesn't need to be a developer. So my next question is, how are you, Knight? I saw your tweet of Stephanie Herbert's and Stephanie Her 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 Herbert's thread. I also have you. Uh, also have seen you at Cold Newbie as well. I'm having a hard time transitioning to tech right now. I have a lot of customer service experience, and I think employers really don't really see how I can contribute. If you have any advice, I would really appreciate it. Thanks. My question back to her was, what are your specific customer service and tech skills and experience? Her response was, well, I have about four years customer service experience. I'm currently working as a claims adjuster. That's a, that's basically a call center. Um, when it comes to tech skills, they are very, they're pretty basic HTML, CSS. I know that I would have to learn some languages and I'm willing to do those things. Just not sure about which route to take to gain skills, school, self-taught, boot camps. I recently applied for a content review just for an e-commerce site and was turned down. And I said, are asked, are there any meetups in your in your city? And um, her answer were, was, not where I currently live, but an hour or so away. I used to attend them in my hometown, but I moved away. That's a good suggestion. I should definitely start attending again. And then I said, are you willing to move for a job? Because I'm just trying to tease, trying to figure out um, where, what her limitations are and get her to think about what her limitations are. Because some people will definitely not move for a job. So um, that needs to, you need to be able to know that when you're looking for a position. Um, so I said, um, and then she says, yes, I am. I would prefer... It's if it be, if I was moving for a job, I'm definitely not in a tech city right now. And then I, my response then, then what would it take, then what I would do is pick five, three to five cities you'd like to move um, into and start researching what kinds of tech opportunities they have. And then look at opportunities where your current skills match. Right, right now you have no plan, no focus. You're expecting potential employers to tell you where you fit in the industry. You are better positioned when you know what the, what the needs are and then can demonstrate to them, which is employers, um, how you solve their problems. Her response, I definitely appreciate the honesty. You're right. I've just been picking at straws here, hoping someone bites. And my res response back was exactly. Tech is like no other industry. There are very few, few career path, clear career paths 
um, which is good and bad. You have the freedom to create your own path to success, which excites some and terrifies others. And her response is definitely terrifying when you don't know where to start a focus. Um, however, having the freedom to be successful and create your own path is exciting. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So that's the three that I got over the weekend. Um, and so what I'm about to do now is walk through um, the one that I received last night that I said um, I was not going to really look at until now. So let me read it and see what happens, what we got. So it says, hi, I saw your offer to feel questions about how to get into tech. Well, I graduated with a CS degree last August, and I still haven't been able to find a job. I'm kind of at my wits end. Any advice you could give would be appreciated. So I'm glad for her. I really appreciate her honesty because what it does is demonstrate, because I always get this question about, do I have to have a CS degree, um, self-taught, do I have the skills? This person is telling you they've been... Um, um, for a year almost. It's been a year almost and they still don't have um, a job and that's the reality. It's sad but it's the reality for many because um, having a CS degree does not guarantee you um, does not guarantee you're prepared as a developer because let me break this down. CS programs, and for those who are new, CS is computer science programs, typically train people to be problem solvers. So they're solving other, their, their curriculum is designed to solve different problems than your straight, I'm learning to code. So, so many people who come out of um, CS programs do not know how to code. They know languages and they played around with Java, or Python, or R, or all these other things. But they did it only to solve the problems that they had as uh, the code was a tool. It was a means to an end to solve whatever homework or project they were working on. So they weren't learning Python to learn the ins and outs of Python to solve very complex problems um, for questions that people haven't even answered yet, asked yet. They were learning Python, Java, whatever, to solve a problem in a classroom. So if they need, they were working with data, they were using Python, R, or whatever language to solve the problem that was in front of them, to complete the task in front of them. It wasn't a broader thing, so, so they only know enough coding to solve those problems. So again, it's like, I give this example. When I want to write something, I can use a pad and paper, I can use um, a computer, I can have someone else dictate it. How it gets done is not the, the, the goal, it's getting it done is the goal. So that's how most CS pro programs are set up. So the, although uh, CS graduates have some programming experience, they're not considered developed programmers, coders, whatever. So with that said, I would, um, I would suggest um, doing this. And so I'm going to read you actually some, um, and I sh should have had this up when I, because I didn't think about it, because, well, I didn't read the question. And I wrote this to someone earlier today on my, um, I do a group called um, Junior Dev Mentoring. And let me, I want to find the exact Okay, so someone was asking about um, how many projects should be on their portfolio um, website. And this kind of answer goes to this thing. So this is going to be my blanket generic statement for these kind of questions. And, and until I get more information about what this person is interested in, um, this is what I, this is my go-to. There's no one-size-fits-all answer to your question. What I would suggest is that you use your portfolio to tell your story. It should effective, effectively communicate who you are and where you'd like to go. All too often, I see portfolios that seem to be all over the place with the hope that someone, something catches an employer's attention. I believe that this is an ineffective approach to any kind of job search. 
you decide where you like to you decide where you like to be in say five years and create projects that reflect that interest it helps the potential employer determine whether you are fit or not which reduces time wasted for both you and them so what I would tell this person who wrote me this um, this question is figure out where you would be now that can change and it will change um, but what you want to do is develop a consistent a, a again this is why this is called the Wild West so when I call it when I said the Wild West I was thinking of the pioneers when they were going out west um, most of you played the game Oregon um, Trail in, 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 in elementary school um, on your school computers so you had to um, stay, go out in the wilderness and figure this thing out but what 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 is beneficial is laying even though you don't know where the the end of the trail is you know what's right in front of you so with something that's right in front of you you can say okay I want to do let's say you want to so she has a CS degree so and it's, again she doesn't have to be a developer um, I want to go into data visualization that, that give that as an example with that said what kinds of pro projects what kind of knowledge kind of skills what kind of connections because it's not just to see that's another thing that people miss you have to be networking you have to be building your brand you have to figure out how you stand out from everybody else what kind of connections what kind of mentoring what kind of um, um, conferences I need to be going to what kind of conference I need to be speaking at um, what kind of papers I need to be writing about this so what you want to do is become an expert in this thing and again it may change because people's interests change you might get into it and realize oh that's not what I want to do but what it demonstrates to an employer is the fact that you are a problem solver you saw you see you had a desire and you dug deep enough to either realize oh I want to move forward with this or oh, I don't want to move forward with this both decisions are great decisions because now you have you have made a choice um, but it, like I said it demonstrates to employers your thinking it demonstrates to them hmm if I gave them this project how much hand-holding would I have to do how much um, because most of um, what people fail to be, think about yes when you're hired as a developer you're hired to develop but there's so much research that has to happen particularly if you're solving if you're not dealing with legacy code like if you go into a a startup or a new business and you're creating code um, you're trying to solve problems that haven't been solved by that company before uh, for a solution uh, that they're trying that they're trying to give to their customers and so what you need to be able to demonstrate is how to do that and that's a skill so how you you need to think about the language and all those things uh, as the tools to do to do the job of problem solving but they're not the job. Um, so I would I would say really get specific on do some research on. You know you so you have a you have a you you actually have a advantage over people who don't have, have don't have a um, CS degree because you've taken really specific courses. So I would go back through my coursework and figure out see if there are things there that interest me that I wanted to look further in but because the semester ended I couldn't or whatever and dig into those things and see what really interests you and go beyond and build a portfolio of that and start networking because I'm gonna say this uh, I'm gonna talk about this before I, I, I sign off you don't want the job that's already been posted because what you want is the job before it gets posted because once the job is posted that usually means they've tapped the employer has tapped their network of potential people people would rather work with people they know um, know something about um, like um, have some interest in um, even if you're new um, if you have an interest if you grab the attention of somebody who maybe is not even looking for a junior developer but really likes how you um, how you work 
your work ethic and wants to commit and dedicate some time to you, they will hire you when they weren't thinking about hiring you. But the, with the understanding, oh, it's going to take me a little more time, this person a little more time and um, to get up to speed and also a little more time on my end to mentor and, and, and do what I need to do to help them support them. But people do that for people they know and they like. So I, all these questions that people ask me about, um, you know, in this industry, my first questions are, are you going to meetups? Are you going to conferences? Are you meeting people? Are you having conversations? Because in your head, you think you know what the industry is, but it's not until you get out into those spaces that you really figure out what the industry is. And it changes so quickly, you need to be in those rooms having those conversations. Um, so that is my answer. Um, and I think I answered four um, today, which is really good. I'm really proud of myself. Um, even with, um, I see that this camera is still kind of off to the left there, but that's all right. I'll figure this out. Hope you guys like my little background. I didn't want to have, and let me know. It looks like it's kind of popping in the background. Um, like there's a halo around me, like I'm on a green screen. Um, let me know about that so I can work on this. This is something I really would like to do. It's much easier for me to do this than to answer individual call, um, DMs. Um, and I know everyone can't get to my workshop. But if you're interested in the Atlanta area and you're interested in taking these conversations further, um, my Taming the Wild West workshop um, is going to be this Saturday at, uh, on the 5th in Atlanta. And you can go to KimCrayton.com, K-I-M-C-R-A-Y-T-O-N.com. And there's a link that says Taming the Wild West if you'd like to know more about that workshop. Um, until next time, thank you. Have a great day.